Welcome to the Indian Gaming Association, the new normal webcast. My name is Lisa Johnson. I'm the conference manager for the Indian Gaming Trade Show and Convention. I'd like to share a few housekeeping tips before we get started. Everyone is muted by default except for our speakers. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the questionnaire chat box and they'll be brought up at the end. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Victor Rocha, conference chairman of the Indian Gaming Association. Good morning. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. Jason sliding in. Uh, my name is Victor Rocha. Rocha. Welcome to New Normal, your go-to source for insightful discussions on the gaming industry and critical issues affecting Native tribes across the United States. I'm Victor Rocha. My co-host is Jason Giles, Executive Director of the Indian Gaming Association. Uh, in today's webinar, we're talking to our good friend, Matt Cradell, journalist with Play Us USA. Matt has been writing about uh, Minnesota sports betting for a couple of years now. Welcome, Matt. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good, Victor. Thanks for having me. Wow. You know what? What what drama in Minnesota, man? I don't know if anybody has been following. Now, this thing goes. This is one of those states where they have a two year cycle with with legislation. They you know so they go on and. Um, you know, I don't know about about politics long enough to understand that that must be come from something during the Revolutionary War or something like that when people were farmers and they couldn't come in all the time. So, you know, I know Minnesota, the Democrats are called the DFL, which is Democrats, farm and labor and stuff like that. So, you know, again, I it's it's giving it a longer runway for more drama and stuff like that, Matt. But let's let's uh, talk about this. Uh so um, where do you want to start? Should we go back two years, one year? I think, you know, this is this has been going on for a while, you know. Um, you know, I think one of the one of the important things to remember about Minnesota is that they're, you know, they were one of the first tribes to get in into gaming. They were in that first push for tribal gaming. They're one of the first uh, states that negotiate with the tribes for compacts and these compacts are for in perpetuity now the rest of us in any country have always looked at this and like what really you can do that you know and by the time they got to california they were wise in not making you know compacts in perpetuity they told us that we had to negotiate i, I don't remember at this point every 10 years or something like that so you know it's really the tribes move a little more cautiously I think than other places because they have that exclusivity. Um, what do you think, Matt? Well, you know how tribes are. I mean, tribes are always, uh, you know, being cautious, and and I understand that that this is uh, this gaming is is the lifeblood of uh, of everything for your tribal governments. But um, things really changed in in Minnesota. I, I think Minnesota first actually uh, represented Pat Garofalo, who is. Um, uh, retiring after this session, um, it, he I think introduced the first sports betting bill even before PASPA was overturned in 2018, um, and at that time it was just a, a brick and mortar uh, bill for the the tribes. It didn't include online, um, but things really got going three years ago in uh, 2022. That was when. The you know originally the tribes were opposing the bill even though it was giving them you know the 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 just the the brick and mortar sports betting but they came around and in 2022 they said you know we want this we want to we want to have tribal exclusivity on it and uh, we um but you know oh and we want to have online sports betting so that was uh you know kind of when like the modern push began and uh, then uh, it's really come down to the past three years, it seemed like the legislative will was there to do it at the end of each session. If the tribes and the horse race tracks in the state, which was only two of them, could come to a, a deal where, uh, you know, particularly Republicans in the Senate um, and, and, you know, in the Minnesota Senate, there's only, well, currently a, a one seat difference between you know, the Democratic advantage over the Republicans. So, there were at least two Democrats who just weren't going to support any gambling expansion bill. So they needed to get Republican support to pass a bill and the Republicans would only pass a bill if, if the, uh, the horse race tracks were on board and that didn't happen in 2022, they couldn't come, come to a, an arrangement, even though it seemed like they were 
you know, having some good discussions at the end and making some progress. And then 2023, they again seemed like they were having, you know, really close to a deal at the end, but didn't get one done and it didn't get passed in the legislature as a result. This year, what was different was they actually came to a deal at the end. Uh, I mean, there was a, a deal that the, 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 the tracks supported, the tribe supported, sports team supported, charities Minnesota supported, uh, you know, the sports betting operators, you know, were, were good with it. So uh, there was a deal in place that everything, everyone was behind. There was the legislative support to pass it, but it still didn't pass because of just the, the, uh, the partisan uh, divide that was going on at the end of the uh, Minnesota legislative session this year. Did, did they have one of those sticks that they use in Men in Black where they flash it and everybody forgets their memories about like the lawsuits, uh, the RICO charges and uh, um, um, the pool tab bills and stuff like that? You know what I mean? You had a real tumultuous path, a path to get there. I mean, you had you had a lawsuit where where the race. I mean. Let's go back. Let's go back. I'm jumping ahead of time because this story is just way too good to rush. You know what I mean? So, you know, one of the things that happened last year when they couldn't get it, you know, the tribes were able to get the pushback on the pull tabs. Now, the pull tab thing is an issue that's always bothered me, too, because the way it was done, it was told the tribes, listen, if you don't accept these pull tabs, you don't get this money, we're going to take... Uh, we're going to use that money and build a new stadium in Minnesota. And if you don't pass it, we're going to move that team to Iowa or somewhere like that. And, you know, anybody that's lived in that area, and I used to live in Sioux Falls for not a long time, but, you know, I, I was fascinated by the, the, the culture of football over there. You know, it's like Philadelphia where people just live, eat and breathe that stuff. So for the, for them to take and threaten to pull the Minnesota Vikings out, and uh, so then that was passed and then it blew up beyond that. I think the last time I checked, uh, uh, you know, pool tabs were over. Uh, it was a multi-billion dollar industry, if I was correct. Right. And then the tribes are the legislature went and they pulled that back. That was a big expansion. And that kind of laid the kind of the groundwork. Right. I think there was a lot of bad blood in the legislature. Am I correct? Uh. Well, yeah, the charities. And uh, well, there's definitely that the charities weren't happy with uh, the, the changes at the end of last session. And also just kind of the way it was it was done at the end of last session where it was put into the omnibus bill, like the DFL omnibus bill at the end of the session. And uh, then it was, uh, you know, pushed through just as, as one of like, you know, eight things, I think, in, in the bill that uh, um didn't have any Republican support. It was just, you know, the, the DFL pushing through its priorities at the end of the session. And, uh, um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I think it, it kind of simplifies the games. Like the games were kind of playing like slot machines and uh, they had, uh, I think the big change is that there was um, an open all where you open all the tabs at once and open all button and they have to remove that. And now people have to, you know, open each tab individually. Um, so that, you know, could be a big change for the charities that like the, the, the changes are going to affect that on, on the first of 2025. So they haven't gone to effect yet. So we haven't seen what sort of difference that's going to make in terms of income for the charities. I mean, perhaps, you know, people are going to these places to play anyway, perhaps they want to support the charities, perhaps they're still going to be gaming the same amount, but the charities kind of say, you know, this could be, we think it's going to be some sort of difference to the money that we're going to be able to, you know, give to our communities. It could be a 5% difference. It could be up to a 50% difference. We don't know yet. Um, so part of the the change was that they got a, a $15 million tax break. They wanted, um, I think they, they've always said that, you know, we pay too much tax that, you know, the state's taking like 30% of our of the money that could be going to charities. It's complicated though, you know, in charitable gaming, there's obviously there's there's the charities, there's also the, you know, the game manufacturers and operators that are making a, a big chunk of the money. So um and he, anyway, and you know yeah. and, and and that's usually the case with the manufacturers or some manufacturer 
pushing it. If, if you look in, you know, sweepstakes gaming in, you know, uh, Missouri or Virginia and stuff like that, or uh, you see who the, the, the people who are screaming the loudest are the manufacturers and building up these AstroTurf groups. And you see it again and again. But I think, I think the situation in Minnesota is different. I think there is, you know, you do see um, a real concern about the amount of money. Now, the first time I walked into a bar, I maybe a sleepy eye or New Ulm or something and saw, you know, the farmers with their grain belt beer and their jar of pool tabs. It was so alien to my California brain. You know, but it was fascinating, you know, and by the way, Green Belt was horrible beer, um, uh, but it was it was really fascinating to see that, you know, so for them to 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 speed it up and 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 put it into a slot machine and, and you know, it's it's a, we've seen this argument again and again and again across in, in, in Indian country and the rest of the United States about the expansion of gambling and expansion of ex grain market. So for them. To do that and then to use it for expansion in the gaming, I think the tribes were right to to push back on it because they did see it as an expansion because the intent was to to fund the stadium. And then once the stadium was built, it's just like, you know, we have a new industry that we're fighting against. And so the tribes have always been very um, uh, protective, you know what I mean? And, and, and again, it's because of what gaming has brought us. So... So then that happened. So how did this, how, you know, so all of a sudden they're, they're negotiating a bill. So this year that's put to the side, they're going forward. You know, we, the charities are saying, Hey, listen, include us going forward. You know what I mean? And then while they're in negotiations, all of a sudden historical horse racing comes in, right? What happened here? Yeah. So that, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, the the two tracks filed with the Minnesota Racing Commission saying, you know, here's our case to authorize us to offer historical horse racing. And uh, uh, the, the Racing Commission, after a couple of hearings, actually approved it, authorized them to begin offering historic horse racing beginning May 21st, which was the day after the session ended, which you know, surely wasn't a coincidence. They're kind of saying like, well, you know, this is what we want to do. Um, now we'll leave it up to the legislature to um, react. And the legislature did react by um, they sure did, they? them from offering historic horse racing. Did, 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 did you know about these meetings? Because I just like popped up all of a sudden. It was like, seemed like it was done in a back room somewhere. Were you, were you aware of these? I, uh, yeah, I had heard from, you know, like the, my sources at the tracks that it had been filed. I probably didn't hear about it until, uh, I mean, I heard about it before the last uh, session to authorize it, but uh, not much before it was like leading to that, that I first heard about it. Yeah. You know, and, and seeing the reaction when, when it was in the, you know, the Tribune, you know, everyone seemed to be as shocked as I was, you know, in the industry that, that. You know, all of a sudden you hear negotiating sports betting, con you know, uh, uh, compacts, and then all of a sudden they threw in horse, <laughs> historical horse racing, and, and, and so it was pretty wild. You know what I mean? It kind of threw everything off balance. Well, now the reaction, as you said, was obviously they're like, "Nope, this is not going to be done." It just feels like a a real unforced error on their part. You know what I mean? Um, why? Well, Obviously, the tracks are just they want to be part of this. But as this was like a once that started happening, where the pushback, there was legislation introduced to reverse that. Am I correct? Yes. I mean, it was it was originally made part of the sports betting bill and it the sports betting bill didn't pass. It was part of the sports betting bill at the end. But since the sports betting bill didn't pass, they made a separate bill that was just prohibiting the. HHR and and that was able to pass. That that didn't work out too well, did it? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, they. I, I do think that negotiations um, actually, you know, worked at the end of the session compared to previous years, where maybe the HHR thing being out there was able to help in negotiations. Uh, but there's other factors as well. I think that was, you know, kind of the big point of it is the tracks saying, you know we're hearing from some people like or some legislators why are you uh like like why do we need to take care of you with a sports betting bill well we could do it on our own with the paramutual product in hhr 
we could become you know self-sustainable through that but you aren't letting us do so so that's why we should be part of the sports betting bill as well as that you know they think that the the sports betting will um they use iowa neighboring iowa as an example that um you know there's some studies that show that or at least one study that shows that um sports betting ended up lessening revenue for horse race tracks in iowa so they say you know that's going to happen here in minnesota so we should be getting some compensation if you're going to give tribal uh, exclusivity on sports on online sports betting yeah i remember a couple of years ago when they opened up a, a sports betting on, in iowa on the border of minnesota they, they had bud grant there you know what i mean with big minnesota vikings so they had bud grant which in indian country were like big deal we hate bud grant you know what I mean? But some of the, some of the other uh, Minnesota people, with the, so that was the whole point. And that was coming some of the pressure in Minnesota to continue sports betting. They're on our border. Uh, you know, um, we need to have it here. Now, that took care of everything, right, Matt? I mean, everything was fine after that. They all get along forward. But that's not the case, Matt. What happened after that? <laughs> well, I certainly thought like the HHR thing could blow up negotiations. It seemed like it did for a while. Um, and, and then, you know, running aces, uh, filed, uh, a lawsuit against, um, well, it, it's against, because they can't file a lawsuit against sovereign tribes. So they're filing the lawsuit against the like, casino executives at the tribal casinos saying that the casinos are operating illegal games and, uh, that they are part of like a criminal conspiracy they, I mean, they filed a lawsuit based on the RICO Act, right? Which, you know, typically is is well, it was designed for to, to go after organized crime and the mafia or Trump or Trump, <laughs> right? I don't know if it was designed for that, but yes. Um, so that's what was used as as the basis of this case, and I I, I think they said that you know originally it was that um, I, I guess some of the tribes there you know, with their old compacts that blackjack is the only table game mentioned in their compacts, but they are, they're offering other table games, including um, poker, which the tracks are supposed to have exclusivity on. So they're saying like, they're going, these tribes are going beyond their, uh, you know, what they're approved to, they're offering illegal games. Then they actually uh, expanded it to, in to be going after uh tribes for for offering slot machines for offering electronic video games that they say that um they shouldn't like, just under igra that they shouldn't be able to offer that exclusively that igra was designed not to give exclusivity to tribes but to um permit them to offer other gaming that's offered in the state and uh this case has already been, I mean, this idea has already been decided in uh, an Artichoke Joe's case in California, where the uh, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals decided that, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, another tribe offering uh, the slot machines means that that, that satisfies the um, need in the state for another entity to be offering it. It could be another tribe that's offering it, but um, they want to challenge that in the Eighth Circuit. And, um, you know, we'll see with these lawsuits. I thought that these lawsuits were kind of an, another an, a negotiating ploy, but interestingly, in the final negotiations, they were asked to drop the lawsuits and uh, uh, Taro Ida, the CEO of Running Aces, told me that they were asked to, uh, to to drop the lawsuits as part of the negotiations, and they they refused to. So even if um, the bill had passed, those those lawsuits would have continued. Um, we'll see where they go. I mean, I, I think it's going to be a big um, a big hurdle to get just uh, you know past the um, the motion to dismiss that will surely be you know that the first thing that's that the, that the well the defendants file and um we'll see i mean if it gets past that point then we can really talk about it but i think that's gonna be a big hurdle for them to get past jason what do you think man yeah i mean matthew really you, you can go back to uh 1992 when the mall of america opened and uh you've always had that 
monstrosity there overhanging everything with Minnesota Indian gaming politics. And, uh, and I understand it and everyone should understand it, that that's a major attraction. Minneapolis is one of the you know biggest and busiest airports in America. And, uh, you know, it makes sense that, uh, you know, that the commercial guys have always wanted to get in there to, to get their, you know, to take advantage of that population. I mean, the part of it, Victor, too, Minnesota is, is urban only in the sense of Minneapolis, St. Paul, you know, the rest of the state, very rural, very, uh, you know, Norwegian provincial. bachelor farmers and New Orleans, yes. sleepy eye. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's always made it difficult, but, you know, they're the ones that gave away the farm, if you will, for, on Indian gaming, you know, they didn't have to negotiate in perpetuity, but they were so racist back then. They just wanted nothing to do with Indians. So, uh, you know, that got them out in their minds from ever having to deal with tribes again, at least on gaming issues. But, uh, you know, Matt, I, is that still, I mean, I, I, there's got to be a lot of, because I was going to initially ask, you know, who are the stakeholders? You know, of course, you just mentioned uh, the horse racing industry, but have you seen the DraftKings come in there, the the fantasy uh, fan duel? Have you seen those folks in there lobbying uh, this, this past session or the year before? That's the interesting thing that, yeah, I mean, of course, the uh, the sports betting operators are in the state, um, you know, are are you know trying to do their best to um, to you know make things happen there. But um, you know, I think that they also kind of like they did in California. They you know learned their place in in Minnesota, where um, they can push for it. But really, what needs to be done is you know between the other stakeholders, between the tribes and the tracks. So they kind of just stay in the background in the okay. state. I was that's it. Well, you know what? It's it's so you didn't see the the snail trail of Jeremy Cooden on the steps of the Capitol or anything like that. <laughs> no. Well, I haven't been in, in Minnesota since 2019. So that's right. <laughs> uh, you know, like I said, you know, when 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 I was there, when I lived there in 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 the 90s i lived in a 96 i was in south dakota and, and sioux falls and stuff like that so it was always it was fascinating to me to see as a californian that, that different culture and beautiful people by the way as we all know minnesota nice so speaking of minnesota nice so at the very end of the lawsuit all of a sudden you know we have this tumultuous you know end of the 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 uh, session where everyone's fighting we have rico lawsuits we have charities and tribes and you know and 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 then all of a sudden we have we have an agreement but we're running out of time what happened there man i was just like what yeah it was pretty amazing that uh there just seemed to be you know at least in the negotiations there seemed to be you know more reasons in past years for it to blow up this year uh, so I wasn't really expecting for them to reach an agreement in, in the final week, but um, but there was one. I think it it, it really started. Um, so another interesting thing for for this year is that you know last year they kind of they had a deal. Um, you know, well they had an offer from the the tribes and the, and the legislature two tracks that was basically three million a year. Um, like they original they can initially get up to 20 million so basically they would get uncapped for like two the first two years and then after that it would be capped at three million what the the tribes would would get out of it plus there were limitations like restrictions on where the money would go so most of it would have to go to racing purses um so that that deal i mean basically they, they weren't the tracks didn't want it to be un they didn't want it to be capped at that amount at least i mean they wanted uncapped but they also wanted um fewer restrictions on the money so that's kind of where it was at the end of the last session where it seemed like it was pretty close but then it enters this session you think like well they'll start where they left off so they're they're pretty close they'll get it done i mean that's why at the beginning of the year i put 85 percent chance <laughs> for minnesota we took to legalize sports betting this year then uh, no other state i put above uh you know 40 
So Minnesota, I put 85. So that was how confident I was on, on Minnesota entering this year, just based on where they finished last year. But then they opened this year with, uh, you know, the offer from Representative Stevenson was $625,000 for the, the tracks. So, you know, quite less than the, the, than the 3 million from the previous year. Uh, and I think part of that was um, between like the, the end of last year and this year, um, just some of the smaller tracks or the, the, the tracks that, uh, or, I'm sorry, the smaller tribes, the smaller gaming tribes, they were thinking, you know, maybe we don't partner with DraftKings or FanDuel. Maybe we don't make much money off of this. And the if the track if the tracks are getting three million a year, that could be more than we're getting from from online sports betting. And that's what we're not. We don't accept that that you know the tracks that you know we have exclusivity on this, but the tracks are going to make more money on it than than we are. And uh, um, they finally came up with a solution. For that, that was the the big turning point at the end for negotiations, where they decided to give fifteen percent of the uh, tax revenue to a tribal equalization fund that would ensure that you know no tribes, even if tribes don't have a partner, if tribes get a, a lower market share partner than uh, for online sports betting, then they still wouldn't make less than the tracks. And that was the the big solution that uh, enabled the the deal to finally be reached with the tracks, where the tracks would also get fifteen percent of uh, the online sports betting tax revenue, which um, and then would be broken down to sixty forty for the first twelve and a half million. I think basically it would be about eight million a year for Canterbury Park and five million a year for Running Aces, um, and. Uh, that was able to get the, uh, the the tracks support for passage. The smaller tribes are now on board. The charities were getting forty million uh, tax breaks. They were on board. Online sports betting operators and sports teams just wanted to, you know, finally get it done. So um, everyone was on board at the end, and uh, then the the whole. I don't think it was really running out of time. I think it was more, I mean, yeah, there, there, there was that, but it was just like the, the, the breakdown where Republicans weren't supporting um, any, any bills that needed bipartisan support. The Republicans just weren't supporting at the end of the session. You know, I, I, I'm checking my notes. There's one more piece of drama in this thing which which contributed to all of it it's just is just which was the arrest of a uh, senator mitchell you know what what i remember reading the article and i go oh, okay and then all of a sudden it became something bigger and i think it was used as a cudgel from the republicans to 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 bash on the dems is that is that correct yeah that's really what instigated the uh you know the the issues that led to sports betting not passing was when Senator uh, Nicole Mitchell got arrested and, and you know, she got arrested for felony burglary, but it's not as bad as it, as, as it sounds. No, it was, or, it was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was, uh, it was like a domestic thing where she, her father had died and um, she broke into her stepmother's home because her stepmother wasn't answering their phone calls. And she just tried to take some of her father's items but um, so it, it seems kind of innocuous, like it would probably get worked out in, in the legal system and not be that big of a deal. However, because there's only the one seat difference between Republicans and or between the DFL and Republicans in the Senate, the Republicans really, um, really went after that and, and said, you know, we can we can take away their, their one seat advantage if we get <laughs> Senator Man. Mitchell removed. So they just uh, try to capitalize on that and and it made it into a, a, a huge deal. And that just stoked the flames of, uh, of partisanship in the Minnesota legislature and in both sides and made things really difficult to pass at the end. I mean, just watching just watching the uh, the session, seeing, you know, if anything would happen with sports betting the final days, it was just chaos where um, the Republicans were, you know, chanting um, things at the end and just going crazy. I mean, it seemed like a, a basically like a, a riot in the 
in the legislative <laughs> chamber in the final days. I'm sorry, but I love this stuff. You guys know I don't want sports. This is my sports. You know what I mean? This is politics and it is the thing that I love the most. I mean, that's what a wild session. What an end to a wild session. The whole thing was just so much drama and so much, you know, you didn't know. And then at the very end, you had this like kumbaya moment where everything was all figured out that could have been done before. But, you know, maybe, maybe the lawsuits were you know, what they needed, but I tell you, if they're not going to drop, and I think this has a potential just to go in and back in the toilet very fast where, you know, you just don't, if they won't drop it, I can't imagine the tribes not backing down, you know, against those guys too, because they're, they're very powerful tribes, very smart tribes, and they're not going to, you know, be taken advantage of, you know, they got smart people working with them. So, wow, and, fascinating. Well, and go Matt, ahead, Jason. You mentioned, uh, you know, this year you thought they would just pick right back up where they left off in good graces the year before, but what does this make the prospects look like for the next legislative session? And by the way, Victor, unlike when you were there, you know, uh, decades ago, you know, Minnesota, ago, yeah. is, Minnesota is a legit sports state at this point oh, yeah. with the hockey team now, uh, base, but they have every major league sport big, big colleges. Um, and, you know, there's no doubt that sports betting would be very popular throughout the state. And now you're being surrounded by it, uh, you know, with Wisconsin and, and everybody else. It's, I, I imagine, uh, you know, it's not a very popular state, but there's enough there and enough interest and Minnesotans are very, uh, you know, they love their teams. Let's just say that all their teams. And, uh, there's a lot of opportunity there for sports betting. And and like you said, the tribes won't let it go as long as these lawsuits are there. But Matt, what does this make next year for the legislature? And do you guys, when when are the, the uh, legislative elections? Are, are they this year or are they in off years? Well, that's the interesting thing that, uh, so, so in November, all of the House is up for re-election. The Senate is not up for re-election. So um, in the House, there's currently a, uh, a six member advantage for the, the DFL over Republicans. Um, so that could change. I mean, they're, um, you know, the Republicans, there's obviously a lot of hostility there. There's going to be, I'm sure that hostility is going to, you know, continue into the campaign for the election. And, um, and, and we'll see what happens if, if the house flips to Republicans and that gives the, uh, you know, the tracks perhaps more, uh, more, more friends, more leverage. Uh, I'm sure the tribes are going to continue to have, um, you know, strong support in the legislature, no matter who's in control of it. Um, but, um, but, you know, we'll see if, you know, Representative Stevenson, who's been the one who's been, you know, pushing for online sports betting in, in Minnesota and, and pushing for tribal exclusivity. He, of course, is, is along with, all the other representatives in the house will be up for re-election. So um, I, I think another issue is the, um, you know, the charities. Um, I think that's going to be a, a part of the Republicans uh, campaign is that, you know, the DFL is the one who passed this bill to, um, you know, to, to, to limit the e-poll tabs for charities. We didn't, we didn't vote for that bill at all. And uh, if you put us in office, then we'll put a fix in to, um, you know, change these games back. And uh, um, I think that's going to be part of the campaign where, um, you know, especially with Representative Stevenson, you know, he voted uh, and he, you know, pushed for that that change um, for charitable gaming. So that could be part of the negative campaign against him. We'll see if that um, if that makes a difference in, in the elections there. And then also when you look at the Senate, and you know, as I said, it's just the one seat difference. So that uh, Senator Mitchell, they basically punted that until, you know, after the session. So that's still an issue where it's, you know, perhaps she could be removed from office and that takes away the, um, the, the, the DFL advantage in the Senate. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, but, you know, with the, um, with you know the, the deal and are they going to enter next session with uh, the same deal in place? I mean, you know, just seeing how it's gone in Minnesota the past few years, I doubt it. You know, I, I I've seen it. You know, uh, 
I've seen each year how they start with uh, just kind of throwing out the deal that they were negotiating at the end of the last session and just start over again. Um, and as you said, there'll probably be, you know, some hostilities with the, um, the, the lawsuits. I mean, maybe the lawsuits will just kind of be dismissed and work themselves out by then. Um, but uh, certainly if they're ongoing, then there could be some animosity there that that causes an issue. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have to see how how it goes at the beginning of of, of next session. There's just a, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff in play. So so that men in black memory stick is a real deal over there. So they start with a fresh memory every session. And wow, you know, it what a story. What a story. It was so dramatic watching it through 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 in real time and you know and with my role in Pachanga.net and in my role with with Iga to to you know, especially watching this, you know, because it's like you said, especially with the a state that's as sports crazy as Minnesota. You know what I mean? They really, really love their team, uh, teams, I should say. And uh, great straight, great people. Um, so it was funny in the very end to see that whole Minnesota nice Hallmark ending, you know, where Hallmark movie ending where everybody's, you know, okay, we'll get it done. And they worked it out. And, you know, it seems like uh, some of the interesting things, well, you know, some of the terms they raised the tax rate, which I thought was interesting. I think the sports betting industry is probably going to wish it got solved, especially with some of this taxation issues that are going around uh, the states right now. I think you're going to see more than that's probably something we're going to be talking about later on down the road. So I guess right now it's kind of just a jump ball, right? We just hopefully that they can come to an agreement going forward. And, you know, hopefully we made some progress in these, uh, but knowing the tribes, like I do, if those lawsuits are out there, I can't imagine them just, ignoring them coming to the table and pretending that they don't exist i think the big thing is that um that the solution was reached to appease the smaller tribes that you know maybe other parts of the bill blow up uh, or the agreement blow up um before the beginning of the next session but i think that would stay in place and that really could help i mean that was a, a big thing that's going to end up helping to facilitate the rest of the deal. Um, so even if, uh, you know, half of the deal is, you know, or just the agreement with the, the tracks is, um, is something that starts from scratch, as long as they start with the, uh, you know, start next session with the agreement that all tribes are happy with it. I mean, that's, you know, in California, like, obviously there's a lot more tribes, but if, if, um, if, you know, California tribes would come up with a, an arrangement where all the tribes are happy with, um, you know, what they would get from online sports betting, then that would make a deal much easier to reach in California. And since that deal has been reached or agreed upon in, in, in Minnesota, I think that that's going to make things a lot easier for next year. Well, you know, it, I'm, I had the same thought too, you know what I mean? I was like, how would something like this play in California? And, you know, we're all, just, we're watching everything, you know what I mean? So if that works, if that's another way, then, you know, it will definitely be added to the mix. And, you know, whenever these type of things can be done successfully, it, it's, it's a lesson for everyone in Indian country that, you know, there's no hills that are insurmountable, no type of relationships, just negotiations. And, but more importantly, you know, making sure that the tribe's, aren't sliding back. I think that's a big, big thing for the tribes. Now, uh, we have a couple questions. Gene said, uh, Gene Johnson, my dear friend, uh, did amendments to the companion bills uh, made in Senate committee to prohibit in-game betting kill the momentum by reducing potential revenue? Good question. That really ended up not being a part of it because they went with the House bill. I mean, the House bill was what was uh, being discussed at the end where the negotiations were taking place. So I, I think that that killed momentum for the Senate bill for sure. I mean, after after that happened, the Senate bill just uh, just died. And uh, so the Senate bill was in the Finance Committee where um, the, the chairman, John Marty, um, he was the one who really didn't want the, um, the in-game betting. And he had other, other demands, other things that he wanted in the bill to really... Um, to you know, strengthen problem gambling, and but but also to you know, kind of do things that weren't industry friendly and and would have lowered revenue. Um, so they kind of they did an end around at the end where um, they 
they moved the, the House sports betting language to another bill. So it wouldn't if, if it had actually passed the House and gone to the Senate, it wouldn't have had to go through the Senate Finance Committee and Chairman Marty. So it wouldn't have had to deal with the, the in-game betting ban. Wow. Wow. What do you think, Jace? I mean... Yeah, the, the in-game betting, just just everyone on this podcast knows, uh, you know, that's where your money is, is in-game betting. You, you look at how the European uh, sports betting operators, their money is made in in-game betting, and that's across all sports. But, uh, you know, that's, Victor, it just shows you there's no, there's there's really the way this is rolled out. Uh, you know, IGA, we, we told folks years ago that it, it's going to be fought in the House in the, in the state legislature level, because you just can't uh, predict how these things are going to go, whether it's California, Minnesota, I think these are probably the two best extreme examples, but then you throw in an Oklahoma where, you know, you, you get a governor that's just completely anti-tribal everything. And, uh, you know, and then you get someplace like Florida, which is groundbreaking. And, and, and you look who their governor is and the tribes and the governor, they're getting along and, and they've forged a path forward. So, you know, it's it's really, uh, you know, one day maybe we'll we'll get all these federal laws to catch up where uh, states and tribes are are taking this. But uh, you know, until then, you're going to have log jams like this. But uh, unfortunately for tribes in these jurisdictions, you I think right now you you probably are leaving some money on the table. Although if you're in Arizona, you know, maybe not. Uh, you know, it just, again, depends on the state and, and how this is going to all roll out. And everybody, including the sports, the commercial sports betting, they all want an easy fix. They all want to just, you know, get this done, get it legalized, everything. And, uh, you know, sorry, our, our federalist system just doesn't allow for things like this because, you know, we let the states uh, decide what's best for their citizens. And uh, unfortunately, that doesn't always apply to tribes. They, when it comes to tribal citizenship, uh, you know, sometimes we're on a on a different playing field, but you know, for the most part, Minnesota has been a, a great model uh, for respecting tribal sovereignty and jurisdiction, at least in the past 20, 30 years. But uh, and and not not uh, easily fought. You know, those were hard fought victories. We're gonna Matt. We're gonna be in Tulalip for our mid year in Washington State. You know, another area that's that's worked out and has a. Uh, you know, some brick and mortar sports betting going on, but certainly they would like to, to have more uh, mobile sports betting and everything out there. And we, we'd we want to invite you and we'll probably do some more things around this. But, you know, in an election year like this, everything is jammed up and everything is, is pretty much stopped while these folks go out and campaign and uh, big decisions, big, big ideas, big thinking, you know, that's held off until after presidential elections. So, I imagine the same is true for Minnesota. Someone asked on there, "What's when is the next legislative uh, session? I, I assume that's next year, or are they on a, a day go annually or every two years? Yeah, they'll come back in January. I guess that's something worth mentioning, though, is, is um, certainly, you know, they were so close to a deal. There, there were, and, and, you know, there were other things that didn't get done at the end of the session because of that um just you know partisan divide at the end so it's possible that they come back for a uh, special session this year and that could give sports betting an opening to pass however it just seems you know i mean with it with the election upcoming it just seems unlikely that the the sides will you know work together anytime before the election you know how it is it seems more likely that they're just going to continue this animosity straight through the election. So, um, did, did you say January? Session. Did you say but January? That, did you say January? January is when the, the next session will start if they don't have a special session. Now that now they have talked about a special session, haven't they? I mean, there's, there's been some talk about it and representative Garofalo, you know, he, with, he told me he would like there to be a special session. That's his hope. And, you know, he'd like to get this done before he leaves office, of course. But, um, but yeah, it, it there's, you know, there's some talk about it and, you know, we'll see it. it, it 
probably won't happen, but um, that's the chance that online sports betting in Minnesota still has to, to pass this year. January, Jason, they have like a whole <laughs> entire summer and well, election and, I know. you know, there's like so many things that could go on between now and that, well, besides bringing in the crop, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, and in Minnesota, I, I used to see those, you know, the, 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 uh, big train of of harvesters that go from from farm to farm they look like these prehistoric beasts in the sunset going on the highways with all these combines and stuff like that going from farm to farm. kind of kind of romantic but you know i'm a californian what do you think what do you expect you know so you know that's that's it's it's a fascinating place i love minnesota i love the people um the tribes are phenomenal um you know, so oh gosh, there's so much there. But you know, Jason, they have they have a long time. You know, they have six months still. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. And look, Victor, that's six more months of AI development. And good God, no, what are we going to get in another six months to a year out of artificial intelligence? Because you know, we're oh, already wow. there. Where I can, you know, if I wanted, you could just start to scream into your phone and put bets in, load up your account. I mean, it, it's here. And uh, whether folks are going to acknowledge it or not, uh, you know, it, it's already here. And and it's really going to reform that whole landscape. I, I, you know, no, something that no one's talked about, sports betting has never been uh, just more um, accessible and, and you have a knowledgeable customer base. I mean, AI is going to really even improve that even more. I mean, you might just have an AI program, <laughs> you know, making your bets for you, uh, you know, at some point, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and wait till those stories come out that people are losing their houses and stuff like <laughs> that. And they will come out, you know what I mean? Right. They, we've seen this stuff before, man, you know, once those stories come, right. You know, and I, I think that's why you're going to, you're starting to see the, um the blowback already and i think that's what the taxation issues are right now you're starting to see the blowback i think uh i had a conversation with gene the other day and he was talking about how he didn't feel it was right for the states to raise the tax rates and i'm seeing this conversation but it's mostly coming from affiliates so you know i think a lot of people are saying you know what we need to take a look at this this industry moved too fast and they knew they had to move faster than the legislators before they figured out what the impact was going to be on the community. And now people are starting to take a, a different look at it. And uh, that's the last thing the industry needs. I mean, nobody likes taxation, but I think fair taxation is a conversation we should be having. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what that tax rate changes between now and then, because that's going to be the well, conversation for the, for the if, next if six if months at, next year. If you group gambling with alcohol and, and tobacco. I often do. Oh, okay, you do? Okay. No, I, was, <laughs> I mean, you know, the, tax rate, <laughs> the tax rates for those industries are, you know, in some states pretty darn high. And I, I saw some recent proposals and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll look for what Gene writes on it. But, uh, you know, states are starting to talk about 50, 60 percent tax rates on sports gambling, which, you know, I it just I don't even know how it's workable at those kind of rates. But we'll, but we'll see. Well, you know what? Uh, if you listen to them screaming in Chicago and, you know, Matt, Matt Ruddick has been writing some really great stuff about this mm -hmm. in his newsletter. And he's just been really uh, helping me form my opinion on, on a lot of this. And he's just a smart guy, but you know, he's seen the same thing that a lot of us are seeing, which is, you know, the, like I just said, you know, people are starting to look at the tax rates and saying, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe we should reevaluate this. And, uh, and especially I think, that progressive tax, you know, with FanDuel, DraftKings saying, well, we're going to pull out. And everyone's going to go and see ya. You yeah. know what I mean? And so I don't think anybody's going to be heartbroken if those guys pull out of the market, um, especially the, the, the second tier ones. But, you know, I think the more time is not a friend to the industry. I think more right. people are starting to reevaluate this. So that's why the big push, you know, and, uh, but when it gets to California, who knows, you know, we're watching everything. We're, trying to figure out what it's going to look like going forward. And it's slow, incremental baby steps. It's not going to be something big like that. And by the way, Sue Sheridan uh, Tucker said, New York state tax rate is 51 and Pennsylvania is 38. Am I, is that correct, Matt? Yeah. Pennsylvania, I think is uh, higher than that. 
Jesus. So the point is, is that they can they can operate in a, in, a, in a high tax rate and with the money going back to the community. And the big the big uh, uh, complaint is uh, we're not going to be able to give better odds and we're not going to be able to give away promotions and stuff like that. And it's just going to be like us. You know, listen, you know, I always said, you know, when you go to the UK and you walk into a, a sports book over there, it's not a sport. It's more like a bodily function, more like a cough or a fart. You know what I mean? People go in there and they bet and then they leave. You know what I mean? It's not, they don't sit and enjoy the things. It's a bodily function. It's not a sports or entertainment, you know? So I think that's what you're going to see over here. It'll just be, they're going to get rid of all the excitement and type of game. And it's just going to be a, it's going to be a burp. You know, you people <laughs> go in and you gamble and you, excuse me, I'm done. And you move on. You know what I mean? So, um, that's my theory. So for those of you who want to run with that one, you're not you know, a sports fan. Good Victor. luck. You're not a sports fan. So yeah, I am. Not. But listen, but, I have eyeballs. I have right. eyeballs that I see. You you look at there. You know, I, I I was in a sports book a book in London, and they talk about horse racing, the the sport of kings and stuff like that. And they have the horse racings, and they pull back in these like somebody's backyard with these swaybacks running down down the track. And so you know, it's not that glamorous. It's not that exciting. It's content. Right. It's content for the sports betting companies and stuff like that. So there is no more nobility in gambling anymore. <laughs> it's just a bodily function. So that's my theory. You know what I mean? So uh, Matt, you don't have to comment yeah. on that too. Yeah. But you know what? We're coming to the very end. We've had some great questions. Uh, Gary's over there talking, our dear friend with a comment. Yeah, this Minnesota has been at, at the forefront of some very big decisions and stuff like that. And I, and I, don't expect that to change anytime right. soon. There, there's no, no, Gary points out back in the day, they, they, you know, couldn't stand tribe so much that, you know, over a $150 tax bill there, they take it all the way to the Supreme court. And, uh, you know, so, you know, times have changed for the better, we hope, but, uh, you know, now you're staring down what Oklahoma is doing and, uh, what other States are threatening to do. So, you know, we, what 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 we thought was past is now right back in front of us, unfortunately. And uh, you know, I Bill Bill Walton passed away the other day and hmm. I heard an interview and he was saying the same thing. He's like, I thought we fought all these battles in the 60s and 70s. And he's like, here I am, you know, my last years of my life. And it's like you know, no effect, you know. <laughs> People they're right back to defending, you know freedom of speech and, and right to protest and all that stuff. So I, I blame, I blame the men in black memory stick. <laughs> I think we all just have that, that, you know, uh, right. we restart again with new thoughts and new ideas and reinvent the wheel every year. I think like Matt just said, so right. <laughs> listen, Matt, thank you so well, much for coming and telling your story. We'll, we'll yeah. And by the way, you've done a great job of reporting, yeah. you know, you've, you've, done a, uh, a phenomenal job it's been a great story and very entertaining and uh you know it's obviously a very serious issue but it's been fascinating to watch as a spectator I really appreciate your your um, um your reporting my friend thank you very much yeah, thank you matt you're doing a great job and you know the reporters in general are, are having a tough time right now and i just hope you guys keep your nose to the grindstone yeah yeah we appreciate your voice having there keeping us informed so we want to thank everybody who uh, uh, showed up today. We appreciate it. I appreciate the questions. And we'll be back next week. Let's see if I can pull this uh, Illinois sports betting thing. I think that's the really big conversation about taxation and sports betting. It seems to be the one we're going to be talking about in the next year. So, again, Matt Cradell, thanks, my friend. Appreciate it. Jason, thank you. And everyone thank you. else, we really appreciate you guys. Bye.